Hi everyone, and welcome to our channel. In this episode, I'd like to take a look at how to create stacked text. But not just a simple stacked text, but one that incorporates a 3D component. There are many examples of how to go about creating the stacked text. In fact, Vectric has a tutorial, as well as Mark Lindsay, CNC. I've added their links in the description of this video. I'm going to run through the basics very quickly, just as a refresher course. If you need really in-depth details of how to go about this, take a look at theirs. So, let's get started. I set up my job as I normally would, setting the width and the height and the thickness of the material. My XY I have at the bottom left-hand corner. You can set yours to your preference. I then go about creating the text that I want. I found an interesting font called Tinkerbell, and I thought, well, maybe we can do something with that. I create the first line of text, and I center it to where I want on my workspace. Make it bold so that it looks a little bit stronger when it's cut out. And I create a second line of text. And again, center that as need be. That's on the first layer. I then take both lines of text and copy them to a new layer called Word Placement. I keep my original text and on my second layer of Word Placement, I'm going to manipulate them. I select a line of text and the two arcs and I'm going to distort them. Make sure you see the little green check mark. That'll indicate you're going to be able to distort your text. Make sure you bake them afterwards, because if you don't, you'll run into problems later on down the line. I chose my second line upon a star and distorted that. And of course, you can always manipulate it a little bit further if you want to. I first chose my top line of text and a boundary vector, and I copied it to a new layer called First Cutting. These are the vectors that will be used to cut down the, the first time. I then went ahead and chose both lines of text and the boundary vector and copied them to another layer called Weld. This will be, in a sense, my second cutting. But I need to weld both lines of text together. My first cutting is my boundary vector and my line of text. My weld layer has my boundary vector and both lines of text, which I'm going to then weld together. And if you look at the U and the A, you'll see it deletes parts that I don't want. That would be, in a sense, my second cutting. That's about it for the text manipulation. We can now go over and start creating some toolpaths. It's a rather simple process once you get the hang of it. I select the boundary vector and the line of text, and I'm going to create a pocket. You choose the depth, you choose the tools. Since there's a large area, I'm going to use a larger clearance tool and then a smaller one to get into the little nooks and crannies. This is the toolpath. We're going to preview all the toolpaths. And this is the end result. back to our 2D tab, and I'm going to select all the vectors on the weld layer. That includes the boundary vector and both lines of text that were welded together. We're going to set our start depth at what our previous cut depth was, so we're not just cutting air and wasting time. 
and our final cut depth will be slightly deeper. We calculate. and preview the toolpaths. And that's the end result. It's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. We can color the toolpaths just to show a little bit of difference. I think I'll choose a darker blue. And you can see on the toolpath, there's a little indication that you've chosen a color for that specific toolpath. But now I would like to incorporate a 3D component. And I want that 3D component to be at the very top of the material. But it's all been removed. So. I'm going to delete all these toolpaths and we're going to start over again. We still can use the words that we had before and the boundary vector. But we're going to put the component, the 3D model, right in the center at the bottom. So I import my model that I found online. Of course, Cinderella's castle. I adjust the size as need be. I'm going to scale it down so that it's a little bit more manageable. And I'm going to delete some of the back because I really don't need all of the extra material. And we know that it's too thick in the Z to begin with. So let's start chopping off the back and leave what we really need. You can use the slider bar to place your slicing plane, that gray plane that you see, and delete what you don't want. Or you could actually input a number to say how much you want to separate the back from the front. I'm going to discard what's below and now I need to enlarge it. Here's something that people may not realize. When you enlarge in or resize a component, it also changes the Z height unless you uncheck the auto Z height option within the set size. That way the Z will stay the same. You won't increase, but your X and Y will increase. I position it as need be. I go into my component property and reduce the height of it. I'm going to reduce it down to a half of an inch. Our material is one inch thick, so let's take up half of it. But I'm also going to increase the base height by 0.1, simply because I want to make sure that the castle stands a little bit proud of our cut depth. One of the important factors is to know where this model is in relationship to your material. Right now, it sits at the bottom, so I want to move it up so that it is at the very top of the material, leaving a lot of extra material at the bottom of the model. I'm going to add a zero plane, and this is important for many reasons. First, you can see that my model, when I bake it together, is 0.6 of an inch. My zero plane is going to be 
This will ensure that the bit will not go down the side and all the way to the bottom of the material if there's a problem. So the zero plane really limits the cutting depth when you're using 3D models. It does not impact the profile or pocketing toolpaths, but certainly impacts the roughing and finishing toolpath. I create a boundary vector around my castle. If you can't see the castle, you can always right click on it and move it to the front or the back, however need be. I click on my bounding vector of the castle. I turn off my component of the castle because I'm just going to be doing a pocket to move down to where I want to start cutting out the letters. So I hide the components. I have my boundary vector of my castle and my border vector and I create a pocket. This will remove material but leave the area of the castle untouched. That's the first cutting. The next cutting is similar to what we did previously. We need to remove what's around the words, the first line of text upon a star. And how we would do that is by showing the line of text, choosing it, and choosing the outline of the castle, and welding those together. Now we create a pocket for these vectors, choosing the boundary vector, and the extra vectors that we've created by the welding process. Our start depth is going to be what our previous cut depth was, and we're going to go a little bit deeper so that it exposes the words, but does not touch the area of where the castle is. Preview the toolpaths. Hopefully, this is making some sense on the process. Of course, you can change the colors as need be. Now for our last cutting. We're going to choose the words again, all of them, one you wish upon a star and the boundary vector of the castle, and we're going to weld those together. And you get this as an end result. I choose all the vectors that are shown, including that boundary vector, which is most important, and create now another pocket, again, set, setting the start depth, what our previous finish depth was, and going a little deeper. The purpose of the start depth is so you're not just cutting air and wasting time. Calculate, again using two different tools. Changing the color of the toolpath. And there we have it. We have the words stacked on top of one another and an area within our workspace that has been untouched. That's where the castle is going to be cut. I make the castle and the zero plane visible. And I'm going to choose that bounding vector that I created just for the castle. So when I go in to create my toolpath, sometimes you may need a roughing toolpath, sometimes you can do it directly with a finished toolpath, but nonetheless, we're going to be choosing the option of 
creating a toolpath from selected vectors. And this will only cut out the castle. You'll see that our model is the total one inch thick because we have the zero plane and the model combined together. We can preview this toolpath by itself. And there it is, stacked text with a 3D component. If you wanted your 3D component to not interact with the stack text, the technique is the same. It's just your bounding vectors would be around the models themselves. You may need to see how that model interacts with the stack text. And here you can see the castle is a little bit indented, a little bit deeper than the letters. So you may need to adjust the depth of the cuts for the letters if need be. So let's try to add a little bit something different. I want to add some stars. And I found a nice swirl of stars that I thought would be appropriate. Unfortunately though, it's going to cut through the letters and I didn't want that. So here's a quick little technique that you can use to incorporate some stars, but not have them cut in the text itself. I'm going to copy my stars to a new layer called Stars 2 and only show those. And these are the ones we're going to manipulate. Our words, we're going to take those. And since I, I plan on using a V bit to cut out the stars, I want to make sure that my bit doesn't hit the edge of the letters. So I'm going to take my letters, my text, and offset them slightly. Then I choose the stars that I want to delete and I click on the letter and I'm going to use the trim objects tool and I'm going to delete whatever's inside that last vector that I chose. And in this case, the last vector would be the letter itself. I select the vectors of the stars. I then click on the S itself, then choose the trim objects and delete the stars that are within the letter S. And I go about this each time. Remember that the last vector that you click on is going to be the border of what the software will delete everything within it. And since our letters have been offset, the bit won't touch the sides of the original stacked text. I'm going to keep the stars going across the top of the castle. I think that would be a nice effect. So as we create our V carving, we need to remember to check the box that says to apply the toolpath to the 3D components. But we first need to make sure that our components are visible. Choose the stars, making sure our components are visible, and create our V carving. I'm just going to go use a very shallow cut depth. I'm going to discard the vector validator. And let's take a preview. Here's our first cutting. It's going to lower it down to the top of the letters.
Here's our second cutting. You expose the first line of text. Here's our third cutting. You're going to expose the second line of text. Our fourth toolpath will show the castle. And our fifth and final cutting shows the stars. It's thinking through the process that makes it a challenge. But if you take your time and go step by step, you can create some rather interesting items. You see how the stars went across the top of the castle, but underneath the words. So, give it a try. See what you can come up with. I'd love to see your results. I hope you've enjoyed and learned a little bit through this process. It was a nice challenge for me to try to explain how to do this. I hope you got something out of it. So just remember, you can do a lot of different things as long as you just get started and do it. If you'd like to learn more about the software, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell to be reminded of our new videos. And of course, as always, if you need help, send me an email, mm at mazalik.com. I'll be glad to help. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Enjoy.